All right, everybody, let's talk about uh, or continue to talk about shading and full value drawings with graphite. But now let's up the ante a little bit and actually start shading some simple forms. So basic still life here, cube, um, a little bit of a cylindrical type form here, a little more complicated, but still a basic form. And then you've got your sphere. So three forms, some cast shadows, pretty easy. So the first thing I want to make note of is I have drawn a line drawing out for you and I've darkened it up pretty clearly just so you all can see where I'm at. Uh, if you're drawing along with me, I would encourage you to also build up your line drawing in a similar way so you can pause the video and kind of get to this point. But maybe before you do that, just real quick, um, I'm going to jot something down because I think this is important enough to write down. Um, in a quality value drawing, so full shaded drawing, uh, and I, I'm sorry for my quick handwriting, in a quali quality value drawing, lines disappear only edges remain let's capitalize edges um and i know some of you are going to say taylor we've been working on line for like four weeks what are you talking about so the line work is much less important and therefore we should do it much lighter here because in the end, hopefully, lines are no longer going to be in this. And it's not all line work that's telling us the space of the drawing. What's going to be doing that description is going to be the edge. In other words, a dark background against a light form or vice versa. And if that sounds weird, hopefully this will be a visual demonstration of that. Now, one last thing I'll talk about before we actually dive into how do we shade this beast. Uh, after you do the basic line work of your objects and, you know, do your uh, axis lines, do measuring, you know, check things like, how big is this compared to this object or this one? Um, once you do those measurements, definitely try to start to find where the shadows are in your image. So I'm going to have a, a small image up of the um, still life, probably somewhere over here, hide or nice quote. But when you look up at the original image, uh, my trick is squint your eyes and squint your eyes to the point where your vision begins to blur. And what you'll notice is the shadow lines become much more distinct. And they're very clear shadow lines because our light source is up here coming down to the left. So this will be the light side illuminated on the sphere. There's going to be kind of a crescent moon shape that cuts through our sphere and is basically the disting distinguishing line between general light, general shadow. Uh, there's a very clear line where there's a cast shadow right under the sphere, and then it pops across our cylindrical form. Um, and if you squint, you notice that even more. Now, a really cool one, I want to bring this one up, is we've got a cast shadow falling to the left from the sphere, and it falls on top of this... Um, cube. Now it's pretty cylindrical, circular I should say, uh, here I guess really elliptical is the word I'm looking for and it falls across a flat form but as that shadow hits the edge of this cube it's pretty awesome it just cuts straight downhill maybe not exactly straight but so that's still partially the shadow of the sphere and then eventually it's probably blending into the shadow of this um, cylinder over here but that really is going to help be descriptive of what's happening on are two planes, one a vertical plane, one a horizontal plane on top. Um, and then pay real close attention to what's going on with the shadows here and why they're happening this way. So this is the shadow of our uh, cylindrical form and then all of a sudden it melds into the shadow of our cube. So pay real close attention there because if you get the line work right in the beginning, set it all up, you're not going to have as much issue with the shading. Now when you actually dive into shading here, uh, I'm going to look at Let's, let's take a peek at what the darkest dark is first. And again, to figure this out, squint your eyes uh, to find where it's really dark. And to me, the shadow under the sphere right on top of the cylinder is one of the darkest. Maybe next to that, it would just be some line work. Uh, well, I, again, I said there aren't lines in our drawing, but there's skinny little lines of shadow right under here and right under this cube that might be some of the darkest. Now, just because uh, um, this, these objects are all white objects, I don't think there's anything that's really, really, truly jet black in this drawing, probably, if we're getting real specific. Like, in other words, these pencils are already black, so they're dark to begin with. Um, so the shadow on this pencil is going to be darker than the shadow on my hand, uh, because my hand isn't as dark as this pencil is. So these are white objects, so therefore our, um, our shadows are really only so dark. So what I'm going to do, instead of going for like a 6B, I'm starting with a 2B pencil. I'm using kind of the wider side of it, and I'm just going to press fairly heavily, but maybe not as hard as I can push on a 2B pencil. And I'm going to go ahead and, and lock down what I think is pretty dark. I don't want it to be jet black yet, but pretty, pretty dark here. Um, I know those are kind of vague terms. So let's block that in first. 
because we know directly under this sphere is one of the darker portions. Okay, a little there. There's definitely some thin sections of shadow right under this object, so I'm going to darken that up quite a bit, and I'm going to bold up, darken up this line just underneath the cube. So that's like a little bit of space we can see under the cube as it kind of you see a little space hiding underneath it. Okay, and those angle differences are slim, but they're there. It's kind of a, a very shallow V shape on that cube. Okay, so that's already, we've, got, we've done a lot, to be honest, um, just by blocking that in. Now, there's a lot of ways you can do this. You don't have to follow along with me perfectly, but my next step is I want to punch in general shadow. Now, I'm not going to get too, too distinct with it yet, but in other words, if this is light, that's shadow, I'm not going to be too selective just yet. All I want to know is what is generally in shadow, and this is where that broadside shading comes into play. So don't forget that term from earlier on when we talked about the value scales and just generally how to hold your pencil. I'm working pretty small. If you notice, my hand is bigger than this drawing, so we're talking about six inches, eight inches, somewhere in here that I'm drawing. But generally, you guys are going to be working on big paper. So when you're covering this ground, you don't want to be doing cross hatching. You don't want to be doing point of the pencil and getting into the details yet and mired down. Think big, big picture stuff. So uh, remember broadside shading. Coining my own terms here, I think. Uh, so um, now I started on an object, but equally important to the object itself is the background. So actually, I can tell that this object starts to get into some pretty hefty shadow way over here on the left side. So this is a, I'm sorry I didn't mention this guys, but I'm using an HB, my trusty HB is kind of a safe spot for me. I just, I know what to expect with it. I can press hard and get some darks and I can go pretty darn light with it as well, just depending on the pressure. But what I've done is a basic shadow. I've gone a little, little heavier over here on the left. And now what I'm gonna start to do is lightly with the HB. I'm not trying to go as dark as I can possibly go but I want to start to lock in a bit of a background tone for myself because I know looking at the background of that image, it's much darker back here than say the white of the sphere or the white on this cylinder. Um, and that's what's going to start to bring out edges of objects is that we have a dark against a light. So I'll shut up and, and, and point out what I mean. So follow along with me. I'm going to shut up for a second and let's just lock in this background. All right. Um, one thing that I'm noticing is it goes from dark, medium, to kind of light in the background. It's a slow fade. So what I'm going to try to do is ease up on my pressure as I work my way down here. There's still some tone on this tabletop even, so I'm not trying to make this pure white, but I don't want it to be nearly as dark, so I'm easing up, going much lighter at first. As I get to about here and up, we're pushing a little heavier on that pencil. So that's what we would call like a gradation or a, you know, a blend or fade from light to dark. And just getting started on it, but we'll bring it out much more uh, clearly later. If you notice, I'm being real fast and loose with this. So check out my overlaps. You can always come back in and clean up your edges with an eraser. So don't be afraid to be a little messy, and especially in this stage. What I'm doing now is I'm diving in with a 2B pencil. Be careful with this one, it can go really dark. I'm still trying to do a nice broadside stroke, nice and even, not pressing way too hard, but trying to showcase the fact that we're darker up here. And around this point on the sphere, we're slowly fading into that lighter area, getting more of that distinct blended feel. And this is all with the pencil. I'm not you know, blending things in with my hand or with a cloth yet. Uh, but a fade from dark to light. And let's continue that on over to this side. Much darker higher up, a little lighter lower. Okay, let's go back to the HB and we're gonna lock in some of these big shadow shapes here. Everything that falls into the shadow, let's just go ahead and lock it in now. 
because we know it ain't white. And so uh, if it isn't white, you got to put something on there. And, you know, sometimes you just got to get started. Don't be afraid to muscle in some, some darker tones here. Okay, a really important spot here. I know this is white. And if that's white and I squint my eyes, well, that's definitely darker than white. So I don't want to be too worried about, you know, trying to preserve too much white. I only want white of the paper where it really is absolutely necessary. And to me, that's only a few key highlights. Doo -doo, doo -doo, and maybe right around here. Okay. Now I'm going to pop in. I'm going back to the 2B. I noticed that the cast shadow right here is quite a bit darker than down here. So I want to go ahead and showcase that. And I noticed this cast shadow here on this is darker than this side. So I also want to showcase that. Okay, still have the 2B pencil in hand right now. If you remember the kind of components of your light and shadow from uh, earlier videos, we definitely have to try to showcase that core of the shadow where it gets darker. So obviously here, this is a cast shadow, so it's very dark in here. But the core of the shadow across the form of an object right in here is always gonna be darker um, in a certain zone. And for us, the reflected light is back here. So the core is gonna be where it really, as you wrap around, right around some of that like bulge of the roundedness of the object is gonna be some of the darkest dark because that's where it's kind of furthest from a light source. It's far from this light that's coming down and it's not quite catching the reflected light that this does over here. So that's automatically starting to give us a little more three-dimensional quality. Let's go ahead and pop that out in our, our kind of core shadow within our sphere as well. Again, 2B pencil, a little bit heavier pressure than I was using before because we've really got to start to pop out some, some areas, make them kind of look a little more on the dimensional side. Okay, that's good for starters. Now we want to also fade into the light. So this is kind of our deeper dark tone right here, transitioning up to an HB. And if that's our deeper dark core of the shadow, let's ever so slightly start to lighten up here. and gradually fade into the general light. And eventually we're trailing off to pure white. So easing up the pressure. And check out how much more dimensional this ball or sphere is starting to look and keep in mind i'm not too worried about edges just yet i keep the edges loose all the way through so notice things are disappearing right here uh big whoop look at this in a quality value drawing lines disappear uh so what it's going to happen and we'll bring out those edges later so edge quality will come in a little bit later on but don't concern yourself way too early about the specifics don't uh what is the what's the phrase don't don't um don't miss the forest for the trees. So don't get so caught up in the details that you miss the big picture. Big picture is most important in the beginning of a value drawing. Big shapes first, little shapes later. Now, uh, might as well talk about this now. When I said lines don't matter as much, maybe lines aren't going to be visible, but edges will be. So what do I mean by an edge? We just made one right here, or I'm making one. By darkening the shadow of this uh, cube over here enough that it separates itself from the darkness of this cylinder, all of a sudden that edge feels a little bit more clear. Now if you say, well, Taylor, I still see a line, it's only because I'm doing this quickly and I haven't quite blended and faded everything in yet. So when you say, well, there seems to be a line here to me, what you're really just seeing is the change between 
this general darkness over here and that general lightness over on this side. Now, the sharper you make that change or the uh, more dynamic, more contrasted, uh, the, the more pronounced it's going to feel. So not all edges are created equal. Some are going to be much more pronounced. Some are going to be much more soft. So right now we've got a soft faded edge between medium into dark, but a big jump from medium to dark over here. Now that things are getting blended there, I can do the same thing here. If I want to distinguish this edge a little better, I'm going to push the cast shadow on the top of the cube much darker than I am the shadow across the vertical edge of the cube. And now we get some separation between edges. Alright guys, so uh, one, one more thought here. Uh, it's not perfect yet, but we're starting to see generally darker on the left side of the cube than the right. Obviously this is a cast shadow, brightest here, so brightest, generally darker, even darkest, reflected light. We're starting to see those forms, brightest, eventually we'll go a little darker here. Really dark for the cast shadow, core shadow a little lighter than that, even lighter for the reflected light. So as long as we're starting to get that happening, you're in good you're in a good zone in your drawing. Um, now there's a lot to clean up still, so I'm gonna shut up and I'm just gonna keep on punching these uh, values in and uh, we'll kind of break and I'll talk more about the details later.
Okay guys, so looking back at this drawing, I um, just wanted to mention a few things. So one is, this kind of boggles my mind every time I uh, shade a drawing, because I've been doing this for quite a while, and uh, it's always um, interesting how long this process takes. So why I say that is that I think a lot of people want immediate results, and I get that. Uh, I, I fall into that category a lot of times. Um, but just remember, it's not gonna be immediate and it takes some time. So um, again, this is a small graphite drawing. Um, here's my hand for reference. You know, this is five, six inches tall right here. And I've logged in 30 minutes already, and this is as far as I've gotten. It's coming along, but there's a lot of work to be done if we want this to look really, um, truly realistic. So just keep that in mind and remember it's all about persistence and uh, patience at this step of the drawing. And um, if, you know, if, you see a drawing that looks about half done, it's just because somebody gave up in the middle, right? Wasn't willing to log those hours in that, that some of us are. Um, so uh, a few things I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna let the video run and while I work and kind of speed it up for you guys. But things that I'm thinking about right now are the, one of the things that looks the most, uh, like there's the most volume is a sphere. And part of that is we really go from some deep darks into some mid-tones and all the way up to light. So we have a good range going on. We also are starting to get a nice darkness in the background around it. Now there's spots that are pretty hazy, you know, um, I, I need to clean up the edges a little bit, but anytime you get a nice dark tone against a bright, bright white, you can really make it a focal point. So the lighter I make this, which right now it's about as light as it can get, but the darker I make the background against it, it's really gonna make that, um, that sphere pop out even more and become a focal point. And I can start to do that anywhere. So if I wanted to make this shine brighter, well, better dark in the background, just a little bit around it. If I need to make this shine brighter, it's all about, I can't go any brighter than the light of the page, so it's all about making this darker. Um, so uh, I'm gonna keep working in the sped up version, and then um, we'll talk one more time about this.
All right, guys, so uh, as you can see, this could basically go on forever, but um, getting a little bit more controlled, a little bit more realistic, um, and let's break down a few of the things um, that make this start to look more like there's volume and real 3D elements. So one, proportion um, and getting the actual shapes accurate is 100% uh, gonna help you with your um, feeling of, of realism in your drawing. Uh, so that's why we spend so much time on it in the very beginning. So, you know, generally speaking, proportion is pretty strong here. But when it comes to the shading, big things to think about are that idea of edges um, that we talked about earlier on in edge quality. So just like when we were doing line work, the line quality and line variety was really important. Think about variety of edges in your drawing. So one, other than exceptions of spots like this where I just haven't gotten, you know, uh, rid of all the lines, there really are very few lines in a value drawing. And, you know, spots like this, you're going to see that occasionally where it's a really thin strip of shadow. Um, but other than that, outlines pretty much go away and what you end up with is an edge. So I wouldn't call this a line or an outline, but an edge. And the spots where the edge is going to be most important is where one light object bumps up against a dark object. So here, here, and here, those lights are the absolute brightest. And because they're next to fairly dark backgrounds, it really makes those objects pop. So we know what's kind of important. Think about edge quality. Now, I haven't really worked on the cube a lot yet. But think about the quality of the edge of the actual sharp corner of a cube and how sharp that edge is versus a cast shadow, which is kind of a diffused edge and how much softer that is. So those are the kind of things that are going to make your drawing feel sensitive and, and realistic. Um, and if we can start to think more about that, um, the drawings are really going to improve pretty dramatically.